Okay. So very warm welcome everybody. It's so amazing to see so many people. I'm always blown away by how many people sign up to these things. So so thank you. If it is your first time um, with me, an extra extra welcome. Uh, we had our first one of these, um, I think it was three or four weeks ago, but it was about two weeks or a week and a half into lockdown. And it was a very strange time for so many different people. Uh, in so many different ways and it just felt like the right thing to do to kind of offer something that would um, hopefully reduce anxiety and worry because I know for me I was just I was full of anxiety and worry and the only things that were really helping me to stay calm was my practice and I became very aware of that I'm always you know I always practice my practice is like that non-negotiable thing um, throughout my day but this felt extra special and extra needed as well. Um, so I just well, I wanted to offer another one of those so that we can really find, sorry, I've just got something there. Okay, I don't know why it's coming up there and not the other one. So that might be because it's private, but thank you for that. So, these evenings are really about relaxing so um what we will do is have a yoga nidra which is basically a lying down meditation if you've never done it before then we will have some movement but it will be quite soft gentle movement and restorative postures and then we'll have another yoga nidra at the end which will hopefully just take you off to bed and you'll have a really good night's sleep um yeah so with that we will come to lie down um, if you do have props and bolsters and things, you can use a bolster underneath your knees. If you have a bolster, you're probably very aware of that. If you don't have a bolster, um, what is actually really lovely is having two pillows underneath your knees and a smaller cushion, so quite a thin cushion for the back of your head, not a big cushion. So something like that letting the head release down you might have the hands away from the body palms facing up or you might have the hands on the belly or on the heart space or a bit of both and if you find that lying on your back for any length of time just doesn't work for you you can also do this on your side so don't feel that you have to stay on your back if it's not comfortable and you might even get kind of halfway through this first yoga nidra and think I can't lie on my back anymore and just roll over onto your side. So do feel free um, to do that. Don't think you have to stay there. So really settle yourself in and really kind of wriggle around and, and really try to settle the body. So if you're lying on your back, allow the shoulders to release down. You might allow the chin to drop to the chest slightly. Allow yourself to take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, there might be a long sigh out through the mouth. <clears throat> and you might do that a couple of times, breathing in deep. And sighing out long. Maybe one more, breathing in deep. <clears throat> and that sighing out, just a sense of letting go of releasing into this space and giving yourself this time and this gift if you like just to pause and be with yourself for a little while and what's lovely about these um classes is that we get to connect we get to connect in a way that we're not able to um at the moment and it can be really quite powerful. I know it's through uh, through uh, electronics, through technology. It's not quite the same as being in person, but actually it can be quite powerful as well. So you might start to feel that energy that you would if you were in a yoga class as well. So yoga nidra, for those that maybe are not that familiar with it, it's you can think of it as a kind of state of consciousness between sleep, and wakefulness it's kind of that in between stage or some people like to think of it as the going to sleep stage which you might actually become aware of just before you fall asleep 
um, and it's it's really quite a wonderful place to be um, and you might find that you kind of drift in and out so you might be kind of very aware of what's happening around you very aware of my voice or you might drift into sleep and that's absolutely fine so kind of feel that whatever your experience is is absolutely right you can't get this wrong um, so really kind of remembering that if you if you try to fight it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't give you that kind of restful um, and ease in the body because really Yoga Nidra is about rest. It's about really feeling that the weight of the body, fully feeling the whole of the sensations within the body and yeah, and just letting yourself be here. So last time we were here, we were kind of focusing on acceptance and focusing on letting go. That felt very, um, appropriate for the time and now we're actually starting to move into um, a Celtic festival called Beltane and normally I would be out in the woods celebrating this with workshops and day retreats um, which I'm not able to do but you can probably kind of feel this kind of general sense of growth and fertility um, and new life that's all around. I know for many spring this year has been much more poignant. It's been um, very vibrant. And I think perhaps that's because we're, we're looking at it in a much more aware sense because of everything that's happening in our lives. Um, so, you know, at the moment, nature really is bursting with life. You can feel it all around you. You can hear it in the sky with the, with the birds. And it's just a, a really lovely time um, to be out in nature. And at the moment, for many, life doesn't feel easy. You know, life can be a struggle. We can have days where it feels like a real struggle and then days where maybe it's a little bit more easeful. Um, but maybe my kind of thinking around this is, could we consider that it might be a period of growth for us? You know, the, um, uh, the quote that stands out for me the tiny seed knew that in order to grow, it needed to be dropped in the dirt, covered in darkness, and struggled to reach the light. So maybe some of us are kind of feeling like, like that little seed at the moment, kind of struggling, kind of wading through um, day to day. And maybe we can consider that this is a period of growth for us. So if that resonates with you, just kind of you can draw this in. If anything I say doesn't resonate with you, just let it go. Let it float away and just focus on being here. So having that settling in the body, just listening to any sounds that you might be able to pick up, maybe outside the house. Maybe inside the house. And closer in, can you hear your breath? And can you get a sense of taste? Almost feeling your sense of taste rather than tasting anything. You might run your tongue or around the teeth and then just allow the tongue to be soft in the mouth. But having full awareness within the mouth. And then feeling your sense of smell, breathing in at the nostrils, maybe you do pick up some aromas, so maybe you just feel your sense of smell. Maybe feeling the air, the hairs inside the nostrils just shifting a little as you breathe. And then shift your awareness to your sense of sight. Feeling the eyes. And if it's comfortable, closing the eyes, softening the gaze, and allowing the eyes to feel heavy so that they might just drop back and down inside the head. The muscles around the eyes, just giving up holding.
And then feeling the body resting on the ground, feel your sense of touch. Maybe sensing clothing, blankets on the skin, or maybe air on the skin. Feel your sense of touch. Like all of your senses wide open here, aware of all of your sensation, senses. And then become aware of your breath. And if you can, don't change the breath in any way, just aware of the breath, aware as the breath comes in and as it goes out. Where do you feel the breath? And you get a sense of that rhythm of the breath. So the rise and fall of the chest. The rise and fall of the belly. And within the chest or within the belly or somewhere in between, could you become aware of your deeper desires? So in Yoga Nidra, we plant something called a sankalpa or an intention or a resolve, or sometimes you can consider it as your deepest desire. So just settling your awareness in your heart space or in your center where you feel is your center. Considering there your deepest desire. Maybe it's for some more calm or peace in your life. Maybe it's for resilience, to feel stronger. Maybe it's about letting go and releasing. So whatever it is, if, it, if it's loud and clear to you and you can you can blossom it into language, then do that in the positive and present tense. So as if it's already happened and on many levels, it has already happened. It's almost like it's just deep within and we need to call upon it to bring it into our reality. Or you could feel as if you are planting that little seed in your center. So that it can flourish and grow as you move through your practice. So repeating it to yourself if it is words. And if it isn't, just be aware of a feeling or a sense or a color. Whatever it is, just being with it for a moment. And then letting it go for now and come back to the rhythm of the breath. And as you breathe in, could you imagine that the inhalation could be like a sunrise and that the exhalation could be like the sun setting? So that rising and setting of the sun as if it was happening with the breath. Breath coming in, the sun rising. And the breath going out, the sun setting. And then pay attention to the connection that you have with the earth. Maybe at your back or your side and just experience the support that you have of the earth and you feel into this as almost like a form of love or a form of kindness sensing that the earth is here to support you and hold you feeling the solidness the security
And then we're going to see if we can begin to invite some of these qualities to be brought into the body. So as if we could create a landscape of our own within the body with mountains and valleys and streams and lakes. It's as if our, our nidra this evening could take a sacred journey or a, a pilgrimage perhaps through the body as the awareness moves. Just resting briefly at, at each point as I name them and, and consider these as important sacred sites as you move through the landscape of the body. So we'll start this journey at the point between the eyebrows. Just at the center of the forehead. And then travel your awareness into the valley between the two collarbones. Just at the very base of the throat. And then journeying out towards the left shoulder Sensing a hill or a mountain here. Moving down into the little pool of the center of the elbow. And into the wrist. Into the palm of the hand and the back of the hand. And all of the fingers and thumb on that left hand. And then can you travel your awareness back up to the left shoulder? And back to that little valley between the two collarbones. Across to the right shoulder, sensing that hill or mountain of the shoulder. And down to the little dip at the elbow. And down to the wrist and the palm of the hand and the back of the hand. And sensing all the fingers and the thumb on that right hand. Journeying back up to the right shoulder, back to the valley at the collarbones. And then down into the center of the chest. Maybe sensing a, a deep cave here at the center of the chest. A warm, welcoming cave. And then moving down into the belly. And further down into the pelvis. Maybe sensing a deep blue lake at the pelvis. Just resting your awareness there. And then across to the left hip, down through the left leg, past the knee, into the ankle, into the foot. Can you sense all of the toes on that left foot? Can you sense and feel the little toe on that left foot? Journeying back up through the leg, back to the hip. Back to that deep lake at the pelvis. And then across to the right hip. Moving down past the knee. Into the ankle. And into the foot. Sensing and feeling all of the toes on that right foot. Can you sense and feel the little toe on that right foot? And then can you travel back up through the right leg, back to the hip, into that deep lake at the pelvis. Journeying back through the belly, to the cave at the heart space, to the valley at the collarbones, the space between the eyebrows, 
And then moving to the crown of the head. Sense and feel the top of the head. Feel that you're at the, the top of the mountain here, the holy mountain on the top of the head. And from here, it's as if you could look out and take in the whole of the view, all of the landscape of the physical body, all of the parts of the body, experiencing the whole of the body all at once. And imagining that this resting landscape could be in complete darkness. So it's like it's the middle of the night, everything is dark and still. And then when the next breath comes in, it could be like the rising sun. And then when the next breath goes out, it's the beginning of dusk and just gradually getting darker until the next breath comes in. So with each inhalation, there could be an experience of the rising and setting sun across the whole of the landscape of the body. And maybe gradually, little by little, you could begin to lengthen the breath. So you sense and feel that the days are getting longer. The breath is getting longer as you guide the breath in. And as you exhale, releasing. And then just leaving the awareness of the breath and take the attention to the space between the closed eyes. So sometimes known as Chidakash. So this is the space of the mind where, where it's considered that dreams are experienced. So if you can, as if sitting back in a comfy chair, just see if you can watch this space. It was, it's as if slides are being projected onto a screen. And see if you can allow the following images to just roll across the screen with absolute ease. So don't think about this too much. So see if you can imagine now a blue sky. A blue sky with white drifting clouds just slowly moving through the sky. A forest with tall trees. A wide open wildflower meadow. A bonfire on a beach, a candle in a cave, the sound of waves crashing on a beach, a trickling stream in a woodland, a tall mountain, a vast desert, a bluebell woodland, a grassy meadow, soft raindrops, a raging thunderstorm. The symbol of Orm, symbol of Orm, the crescent moon at night, crescent moon on a starlit night, the cloudy day, a raging fire. A raging fire, a candle flame, a candle flame. And just keep 
watching this space, just this space of the mind with the attitude of a witness. So without interfering, without any sense of hope or repression, and just I'll let whatever needs to be to be. And just be the witness for the next minute or so of whatever comes, whatever thoughts come or feelings or images, whatever's there, just let them go. And then let your awareness return to a sense of lying on the ground, your body on the ground, a sense of touch, the earth beneath you and the support that it's offering you. Be aware of your breath. Nothing you need to do just yet. Just awareness of the body being here and the body breathing. Change is not something that we should fear. Rather, it is something that we should welcome. For without change, nothing in this world would ever grow or blossom. And no one in this world would ever move forward to become the person they're meant to be. So as you lie here, we're going to begin to bring in our B breath, sometimes called Brahmari breath, you might know it as. And it's just a simple humming, so we sound like bees. And hopefully it will create an awakening that you might sense in the belly or the chest or maybe somewhere else in the body. So it's just with the lips closed on the exhale, we just hum. So we'll do five or six rounds. So you can take a deep breath in. When you finish your next breath, just allow your breath to return to normal. Just take a moment to see how that feels in the body. Can you sense the subtle energy shifting?
And then when you're ready, begin to bring little movements into the fingers, little movements into the toes. When you feel ready, hug the knees into the chest, but do take your time. So equally, if you want to just simply lie here, you are absolutely welcome to as well. We're going to start to move a little bit, but do listen into your body. So even more important that we're practicing at home. Um, I'll offer you uh, lots of modifications, but if anything doesn't feel right, please do modify or stop, pause, do something that you know is good for your body. And if I offer you anything that just doesn't make sense to you, just don't do it. So you could hug the knees in, you could rock side to side, depending on how that feels on, on the back of the body, particularly the spine. For some, it feels lovely because it's a little massage to the muscles either side of the spine, but if it doesn't feel good for you, just leave it out. You can just stay still. And sometimes there are days when the body really just wants to be still as well, so there's less we need. And if you want to create some circles in the knees, you could draw the knees into the chest and then bring the knees away from one another out to the sides and then back together again. So I'd invite you to try to connect with the breath in this as well. What I like to do is cut the hands over the knees, inhale to draw the knees into the chest, and then exhale to draw them out and around and back together so they kind of sit over the hips. So it's an inhale to draw the knees in and exhaling round. You might have a different way of doing that. Your breath might feel different for you. So go with your kind of intuition on this as well. This is the way it feels good for me. Just check in for yourself. And if you need anything behind your head, um, please do have it, but nothing too big um, because it, it can be quite restrictive for the breath and for the chest. Um, and equally, if you can have nothing behind the head, even better. And then you might circle in the other direction if you're doing circles. But just really soft, mindful movements. See if you can keep more of the lower back on the mat than reaches off the mat. So you might need to stay a little bit connected through the belly to enable that to happen. Just staying with your core or making the circles small. They don't need to be big either. in many ways it isn't about the movement it's about the awareness that we're creating the awareness of how it feels to move and breathe in our bodies and then another inhale and then as you exhale releasing the feet onto the mat take an inhale Press into, so bring the feet a little bit wider than the hips, and then press into the feet and draw the knees towards one another. So we're just going to begin to circle through the arms. So as you inhale, allow the arms to come straight up to the top, and then as you exhale, begin to drop them behind the head. So you might find that they don't go all the way, and that's absolutely fine. Just take them to where they do go and then inhale to bring them straight back up to the top, and then exhale to bring the hands down beside the body. Inhale to reach the hands up, and exhale the hands behind. So just beginning to slightly mobilize the shoulders, but nothing too strenuous. Keep the belly connected, lower back onto the mat. Inhale, the hands come back up, and then exhale, they come back down beside the hips. Just move with your breath. Nothing forced, nothing quick. Exhale, the hands behind. Inhaling, drawing up. And exhaling, the hands back down. And then the next time that the hands come back down, no need to rush to get there. Just take your time to get there. Hug the knees back into the chest. And you can roll over to one side to come all the way back up. So we're going to come onto a tabletop. 
<clears throat> so you can press into the hands, have the hips over the knees, draw in through the belly. So keeping a, a quite a nice flat spine there, we're going to press into that left hand and take an inhale and raise the right hand. But it doesn't need to be high, where works for you. And then as you exhale, sweeping the right hand underneath the left, it's not going to touch down. You're just going to reach forward a little. And then inhale, pressing into that left hand, reaching up. Again, that connection with the breath, really important here. Exhaling, a little bit of a twist. Inhaling to reach up. And exhaling underneath. Coming back to the center, bringing that hand down and just having some circles through the hips. So again, they could just be really small little circles. They don't need to be big. If you do want to make them a bit bigger, they could go down towards uh, one heel, across to the other and back up again. Maybe even creating more side movement, side stretches. But sometimes just that circle into the hips is really all the body needs. And then pausing in the center, draw the belly in so you have a nice flat back again. Press into the right hand and take an inhale and lift the left hand, opening through the armpit and the shoulder. And then as you exhale, sweeping underneath, reaching as far over as feels comfortable and then pressing into that right hand again, lifting the left hand up. Exhaling, absolutely go with your breath. Maybe one more there, inhaling, reaching up. And then exhaling. And, and then slowly coming back to your tabletop. And moving circles in the other direction with the pelvis. So it might be just at the pelvis, or you might sink down to one heel and back up again, or towards one heel, or side stretches. Sometimes I sometimes feel that it's just side stretches that I need. So, like, hip goes out to the side one way, head the other. It's just kind of nice to feel into what the body needs to allow you to rest into your restorative poses and into your yoga nidra and then eventually into sleep. So releasing any tension that might be there. And then pausing in the center. I mean, we'll move through a couple of cat cows. So you can tuck the toes, take an inhale, allow the belly to drop towards the earth. If that's too much of a back bend for you, then just stay connected through the belly, gazing towards the sky. And then as you exhale, untuck the toes and round through the back of the body. You could press through the hands more, broaden across the shoulders. Remember to only make this as deep as is right for your body. So you're tucking the toes, inhale to gaze up, and exhaling, drawing in and round. Inhale. And exhale. And then complete that breath on your next exhale. Again, no rush to get there. Take an inhale, draw the belly in, so flat back again, and we're just going to lengthen the right leg on the exhale. So tuck the toes, press through the heel, so it's just a little bit of release through the back of the leg, the back of the knee, the hamstring. Nothing too forceful, so just feeling that you can slowly let go of any tension there, stay there and breathe. Just check in with the belly and the lower back. So could you draw into the belly a little bit more? Take another inhale. And then as you exhale, release that knee down. Inhale in your tabletop. Keep the belly connected. As you exhale, lengthen the left leg. Sometimes as we go through these little movements towards the end of the day, we can kind of really get a sense of maybe anything that we might be holding on to from the day. 
you know, it's thought that we hold a lot of emotions and experiences in our body. So here, maybe we can just ease them out, breathe them out of the body. Take another inhale. And then as you exhale, release that knee down. And then we're going to sit back towards a child's pose. So there's so many ways you could do child's pose. If you have a bolster, you probably already know what to do. So you can go straight there. If you don't have a bolster and you have a couple of pillows, this is actually really lovely. So you can have the knees a little bit wider, pillows in between the legs. Try to get a little bit of length through the body so that the belly can come down and the chest can come down. And then you can have one cheek on the pillows. If it feels a little bit soft, which my one does, I might bring a folded blanket or a cushion. And that just gives it, yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> so you could allow the palms to face upwards and the elbows to bend if that feels good for the shoulders and the arms. But really that kind of connection with the belly and the chest is kind of what we're after. So find somewhere that you can you can settle in. And I didn't say actually, if you're having any issues or pain into the feet, do have some folded blanket underneath the feet. It works for some people depending on what's going on. So if it's the front of the feet or the ankles, or having something between the sit bones and the heels. So if you do have pain there, see if that helps. Let me know if you're not sure. All good, I think. So settling in and feel that kind of heaviness that we created um, in our in our nidra, where we just kind of let the body sink into the earth and feel that kind of steadiness of the earth. You know, she's always there to to give us what we need, give us support, nourishment, energy. And she's always full of wisdom. Keep drawing on that. And considering if this time of maybe change, if that's what you feel you are going through, or maybe a period of growth. Considering what that might mean for you. So many of us have had to slow down or stop altogether. And with the way that the human brain is, that's often very difficult. Very difficult for us to just be in that stillness and deal with everything that's going on, maybe in our minds, in our daily lives, and be okay with it. But actually, this is what nature teaches us. It's constantly changing, moving from one season to the next. Yet there's there's no worry, there's no holding back. All she sees is opportunities. Opportunities for growth in the spring, release in the autumn, stillness in the winter. Taking what you need from nature. And then you could bring the other cheek onto your prop. If it feels okay, you know, do check in with the neck. If you need to do anything different, then please do. A couple more minutes here. And again, if staying here for a couple more minutes isn't going to be right for you, find a place that would be maybe simply lying on your belly. That can be really quite restorative as well, because you have that connection with the earth. And 
see if you can feel into that ebb and flow of the breath. Coming and going. Ever present. And then just before you would begin to move, take some slightly deeper breaths. So you feel that you're guiding the breath in a little. And just sense and feel how that changes the posture or how it moves in the body. Maybe more into the belly or the chest or more into the shoulder blades, the back of the body, more into the side ribs. And then when you feel ready, begin to come back up onto the hands, moving any props out of the way, and then coming down onto your belly. So you could make a pillow with the hands as you come down onto your belly so the forehead can rest. So if being on one cheek isn't great for your neck or you've just had enough of that, have the forehead on the hands. If it feels better, you could have the hands beside the body and one cheek down. You could try out both and then know which one's right for you. And a little bit of movement here. So you could bring the feet into the air. So this is all optional. And allow the feet to sway from side to side. So if you feel like you just want a bit more stillness in the body, then just take that. But sometimes just that sway side to side is quite nice for the lower back and the hips. And if you have got one cheek on the earth, bring the other cheek. So you can just allow both sides of the neck to release. And you might just pause with the legs if you've had enough of that movement and just feel into the sensation of the body. And how these poses maybe are beginning to shift sensations, maybe that sense of fitting tingling, warmth, whatever it is, really feeling that. Maybe it's in the palms of the hands, the fingertips, maybe all the way through the legs. Sometimes you can get a sense of where the energy is free flowing, but then also maybe where it feels a little bit stuck or blocked. And if you come across any areas like that, just feel that your awareness could gather around those areas. And you might breathe into them a little bit more. And gradually you might find over time that it actually releases the energy, releases the blockage. 
so that energy can flee, free flow again. And then bringing the hands back under the shoulders, we're gonna push all the way back up. And I'm gonna show you the next posture. So this is gonna involve probably all of your props. So if you have a bolster, then it's gonna go down to go underneath your knees. If you don't have a bolster, then you could roll up a blanket or a towel to uh, pretend to be a bolster. And then we're gonna take our pillows and our blankets and our cushions. So let, do let me show you this. So you're gonna pop one pillow down and then one over the top, but try to make it so that there becomes like a little step. You don't want them all just piled on top of one another. You wanna create this little step with as many things as you have. So that one folded blanket can come down, but you can see there's a step there. And this is where your back is going to be. So remembering this is more restorative. Um, it's not like a deep back bend. That's not what we're trying to achieve. And if you get into this and you find that it is a deep back bend, then you might need to shift your props around. So then you're going to come down, legs over the bolster or folded blanket, props nice and close to the pelvis and then rolling over the top. I have two thin um, cushions for my head and this is just heaven. <laughs> so I used to do my home practice with my bolster and now that we're doing all of this Zoom online, I had to find other ways of teaching restorative without bolsters and I found this and it's just heaven. <laughs> So see if you can find heaven. <laughs> I like to allow the hands to be away from the body, palms up, because that allows me to release the elbows. I find if I have the hands on the belly or the heart, which I sometimes like to have in my practice, I've got nowhere for my elbows. So unless you've got more props, but hands away from the body, palms up, just allows the arms to release. So hopefully, you can find something there that's going to work for you. And do take a little bit of time to find that place, find that heaven. <laughs> so there should be no back bending. There's no pinching in the lower back. And you really feel that you can let go. So many of you will practice yin with me, and I love yin. But this is not yin, this is restorative. This is being in a place where the body can completely let go. So you don't need to hold anything. The sensations are not strong as they might be in a yin pose. Let's just release. And when you found that place, you might take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out, maybe sighing. Deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And having that intention of resting here. So there are many things that we might have in our lives that we consider rest might be exercise or watching telly, reading a book, or other things that you might consider rest. But here, this, this is a different form of rest. This is relaxation for, hopefully, the whole of the body, but also the mind. Quite often, the human spirit is unable to rest. It needs a focus. So here, our focus can be our breath and our body. So bringing your awareness back to the breath, and can you be aware of the breath at the very tip of the nostrils?
And how long does it take before the awareness is no longer with the breath at the nostrils? One breath, five breaths. Maybe you are able to stay there. But try to just notice. Try to notice when the mind takes you away. And try to be gentle with yourself. So not having any judgment. Just building that awareness of where the mind wanders off to. And then just very gentle, gently bring your awareness back to the tip of the nostrils. Once again, just check where your awareness is. And you might find that you need to do it over and over again, drawing your awareness back. But let that be okay. Remember that this is what the practice is. That noticing and then coming back. Noticing and coming back. And then the next time that you breathe in, breathe in that little bit deeper so that the breath might be guided further down into the belly. And as you breathe out, it's a long releasing exhale. Do that a couple of rounds, breathing in, really feeling that you feel the belly, the side ribs, right up into the collarbones. And then exhale, a long releasing breath. And when it feels like the right moment, begin to bring movement into fingers and toes. Drawing the knees into the chest perhaps, moving side to side maybe, rolling to one side to come back out, but know that there's no rush. Take 
your time to get there. And we're going to come to lie on our backs. So if it's possible, you could just kind of move all of your props out of the way and lie on your back. So when you come down onto your back, draw the knees into the chest. Again, it might be a side to side. It's kind of almost intuitive when you go down onto your back, if side to side feels good for you. And if it doesn't, you'll kind of intuitively know just to stay still. So really kind of listen into that, that wisdom that you already have within you. And then we're going to allow the knees to open a little so you can reach in between the knees and take hold of the ankles. And as you do that, just notice what happens with the shoulders. So mine reach up and away, and I need to actively draw the shoulder blades down onto the mat. And maybe the chin needs to draw to the chest. So a kind of very soft, happy baby. So notice how the lower back is. Can you allow that to release? Do you need a pillow under your head if you feel that you're pulling and straining on the neck? And is it possible just to pause there for a couple of breaths? Breathing into the belly. Breathing out. And if you're used to happy baby, and you know that going into the fuller version is really nourishing for you, then you're very welcome to, but do notice what happens when you do that. So full happy baby would be bringing the soles of the feet into the air and taking hold of the outsides of the feet. So if there is more strain in the back of the neck and the shoulders reach up off the mat, then really I'd invite you to just make it softer and back to just holding the ankles. And then take another inhale wherever you are. And then exhale, bringing the soles of the feet onto the mat, bringing the feet a little bit wider than the hips. And take an inhale there. You could allow the palms to be away from the body facing upwards. And then as you exhale, just drop the knees over to the left side. So the soles of the feet or the feet stay on the mat. Maybe not the soles of the feet, <laughs> but the sides of the feet kind of come on the mat at that point. And then inhale to bring the knees back up to center and then exhale over to the right side. So it's kind of just little side stretches, maybe slight twists. Inhale back to center. Exhaling over to the left. Again, it's all with your breath. Making that connection. Body, breath, mind, spirit all together. Maybe one more round, inhaling back to center. Exhaling knees down. Inhaling back. Exhaling knees down. Inhaling to center. And then we're going to set ourselves up for our Shavasana, for our Yoga Nidra. So as we started, in the best, most comfortable position that's going to work for you. So remember, you can do this on your side. Um, it's really quite lovely to do on your side as well. If you have a bolster or any folded blankets, you can use that to prop your knees. You might need a little bit more cushioning for the head. I quite like doing it like this sometimes. And then you can bring the knee on top of, you could even use a pillow, bolster, folded blanket, whatever it is just creating that space for the pelvis and maybe for the shoulder if you bring the hand on it as well. So it's really quite cozy. Or just simply on your back if that works for you, but take a little bit of time to make yourself comfy. 
And if you have an eye pillow or something to go over the eyes, then you can pop that on as well. Settling back in, making your little nest again. And you could even do this in bed. <laughs> and then just drift off to sleep. So then as you settle in, I always like to take a deep breath in, <sighs> sighing out through the mouth a couple of times in that way, deep breath in, <sighs> sighing and releasing, feeling the weight of the body settling down once more. Having that scan back through the senses, with the sounds, the taste, soft tongue, smell, sight, soft eyes. And touch, feeling the touch of the ground, allowing the weight of the body to be felt, and for this nidra we're going to bring in our, or be aware of, our inner smile. So our inner smile is said to be this kind of golden glowing joy within us. It's always there all of the time and all we have to do is to become aware of it. It can be quite a lovely magical practice actually. Um, so you can begin to get a sense of maybe a smile very softly coming across the lips. It might just be that the outsides of the lips just begin to turn upwards, just ever so slightly. And then we're gonna see as we, as we rotate our consciousness around the body, can we invite this inner smile in all parts of the body? So sense and feel that smile at the lips and notice perhaps how it softens the face. Can you bring a smile to the cheeks? And into the eyes, smiling at the eyes. And into the eyebrows, smiling at the eyebrows. Into the temples, Smiling across the whole of the forehead. Smiling into the eyebrow center. All the way down the bridge of the nose. To the tip of the nose, a little smile at the tip of the nose. And back to the lips. Moving down into the throat, smiling at the throat, and across to the left shoulder, smiling with the left shoulder, and across to the right shoulder, smiling there. See if you can sense a smile at the left shoulder and the right shoulder together. And then moving down into the left elbow, smiling there. Right elbow, little smile. Left wrist, right wrist, smiling at both wrists. Smile at the left hand and the smile at the right hand. 
and little tiny smiles at the very tips of the fingers. So the index fingers, the middle fingers, the ring fingers, and the little fingers. And smiles at the thumbs, the left thumb and the right thumb. Smiling all the way through from the tips of the fingers, all the way back up to the shoulders. And back to that space at the throat. And then moving down into the chest, lots of smiles at the heart. Smiling around the lungs the rib cage. And then moving down to smile at the belly. Feeling all the soft organs in the abdomen just smiling. Filled with this bliss and this happiness. Moving down into the pelvis. Smiling at the pelvis. And across to the left hip. Smiling there. And the right hip. Smiling at the left hip and the right hip together. And then moving down to the left knee and the right knee. Smiling at the knees. Moving down to the ankles. Smiling at the left ankle, the right ankle. Smiling at the left foot and the right foot. And little, little smiles spreading across the toes. The big toes, second toes, third toes, fourth toes, and little toes. And then sensing and feeling the toes, the feet, the legs, all the way back up to the hips, smiling all the way up, back to the pelvis, the belly, and at the heart center. Become aware of all of the smiles within the body drawing into your center. And then perhaps as you inhale, you could sense that the smile at the center of the chest could expand through the whole of the body so that you're smiling out from the heart space on the inhale. And then as you exhale, all of those smiles gather together at the heart space. Inhaling, drawing them out to the crown of the head, down to the tips of the toes, maybe even beyond the body. And as you exhale, they gather back in at the heart. Seeing if you can move with your breath in that way. Inhaling, drawing the awareness out, expanding. Exhaling, drawing in tight at the heart space. Continuing in that way, in a way that makes sense to you. Feel that your breath can expand this smile all the way through the body, but maybe beyond, maybe beyond the body, to permeate the room, to extend to people around you, to loved ones. Feeling that you can. Awaken this compassionate side, this loving side, this carefree side of you. And the next time that you inhale and expand outwards, see if you can pause there, but without the breath. So just breathe naturally, but keep your awareness on that expansion outwards. Feel that your smile permeates beyond. And 
And the next time that you exhale, drawing all of those little smiles back into the heart space. Pausing there again, letting the breath come and go. But your awareness just stays at that point within your, your center, your very depths of your being. Pausing there. And then can you be in a space where that expansion of the smiles drawing out throughout the whole of the body and maybe throughout the whole of the world, but at the same time, you have that awareness within, you have that pinpoint within. Is that possible to experience both of those at the same time? That expansion outwards, but also that Deep awareness within. And then letting go of that experience. You just have a general feeling or a general sense of the inner smile within every cell of your being. Trillions of inner smiles glowing all together. Feeling this warmth or healing or this bliss or joy or however you experience it. This, this, this positive quality of bhavna, of loving kindness. And if you can, just seeing in your mind's eye your inner smile and what that means to you and how you can allow it to shine outwards to all beings to the ones you love, to your neighbors, to colleagues, people you vaguely know, to the whole of the world and to all beings. And then gently bring your awareness back to your heart, back to your center. And in that space, can you recall your sankalpa or your intention? And if it was words, remember positive present tense. Repeat it to yourself so that it sets seed here. And if it's a general feeling, just feel that or visualize that, or however it makes sense to you. And then we'll let that go. We're going to return to our B breath to enable us to just reawaken very slowly. So when you're ready, just on your exhale, mouth closed, create that sound of a B. Take a deep breath in. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And then once more, guiding your breath in. Guiding your breath out. When it feels like the right moment, little movements into fingers and toes. Take your time. You might stretch, bringing hands over head, legs long. And then you might draw knees into the chest. But slowly, slowly, reawakening the body. Feel that there's no rush. When you draw the knees in, you might rock side to side if that feels good. And you might roll over to one side and just pause on your side if you're not there already and just maybe say to yourself all is well all is well and then gently coming back to sit and equally if you just want to stay lying down <laughs> or you're already asleep that's absolutely fine but if you can we come to sit just to be aware of our practice really, have any gratitude that you might have for your practice or for your day, something that maybe has happened in your day or just any gratitude that you feel. Gratitude can, can change our inner world, it can it can release any negativity that might be there. And it can help us to have a clearer perspective on life in general. And I'm bringing my hands into prayer at the heart center. Just bowing down ever so slightly towards hands and towards heart. And we'll close with one on. So take a deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Bowing down towards all that you are, all that you can be. Thank you for your practice. Namaste. I hope you have a lovely evening, a lovely sleep. Thank you all for coming. I do appreciate it. So lovely to see you all. No, we can't be together, but uh, this is the next best thing, definitely. Oh. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was just what I needed. Thank you so much. Thanks, Louise. See you tomorrow. Have seven. See you there. <laughs> oh, thank you for your messages. Thank oh, you. Lovely. Any questions? Do let me know. You can always email me. Lots of people in the dark. <laughs> it's not dark, isn't it? <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. See you again. Bye, Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye, Sally. Bye, Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.
can do. You all right, Judith? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not. Nearly went to sleep. Oh, very good. And, and the girl <laughs> did come in to offer me a cup of tea halfway through. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it down. <laughs> ah, lovely. Is that Joan there? Hi, Joan. Oh, she's gone. Bye. Oh, sorry. No, no, don't worry. Bye. Thank Hi, you. Jenna. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Take care. You too. You too. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.